What's going on boys and girls? We're going to do a great recipe today. I've done one before and made videos about it before. It's going to be some oxtail stew. Now this oxtail stew is, is a long drawn out procedure to make. Um, once you get it together, the, the preparation part is not long and drawn out, but it takes about three to four hours for the meat to get tender. And it's really going to be a stew. It's going to be delicious. Uh, oxtails are expensive as heck. You know, oxtails used to be one of those things you bought at the uh, grocery store and it was cheap. Not no more. You know, you, um, I think I ended up spending like 40 bucks for five pounds of oxtail. So that's, that's sky high. So, um, but if you, if you do like really good meat and beef and things like that, you've got to try it. All righty, we're going to start off with um, about five pounds of meaty oxtails. We're going to have some salt and pepper. Of course, you know I use my standby uh, seasonings here, the, the uh, Tony Satchery's and dill weed and garlic powder. So, But you can just use salt and pepper in this recipe, guys, if you want to. We're going to use a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour just to kind of uh, braise our our meat here. We're going to use um, two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to use uh, one large onion. I already, already got it chopped up. We're going to use two carrots. I already got those chopped up. Um, two stalks of celery. Got those chopped up as well. We're going to use uh, four cloves of garlic. And I used about, I used about six, about eight cloves of garlic. And they're already crushed and peeled. Um, Going to use a cup of uh, a fourth of a cup of tomato paste, um, a bottle of wine. Uh, you want to use a red wine. I'm using some of this Newman's own Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, Going to use some beef broth as well. Going to use uh, a can of diced tomatoes, and these are seasoned diced tomatoes with green chilies. You can use just a regular can of diced tomatoes. Um, and you want to keep the juice. You're going to use some bay leaves. I don't have the bay leaves picture here, guys, but I've got some bay leaves. You're going to use eight ounces of uh, button mushrooms. or Button mushrooms are the same things as white mushrooms. Two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And you're going to use some buttered noodles. And i got the buttered noodles back here in the background. And with the buttered noodles, you're going to have to use some, some butter and a small shallot. Two cloves of garlic. Some salt and pepper, some some chives. To which the chives are back here. They're minced, um, and some Parmesan cheese and some lemon juice. So that's those are the ingredients. So it's a it's a lot to put together, um, and hopefully this video is not so long because I'm not gonna. Of course, I'm not gonna make a four hour video. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna season our meat here. It's been washed and it's been patted dry. So we're gonna put this seasoning is almost out here. We're going to just, I'll get, I'll get some more of the um, Tony Satchery's. This is some dill weed right here, guys. We'll season it up real well. Okay, so I ended up using some Tony Satchery's, some dill weed, some cumin, um, and some mustard, um, some mustard powder as well, too. So we want to season that up real well and kind of stir it around, making sure everything is coated. Some of it doesn't look like it's coated. I want to go back and coat all those things up real well, guys. Alrighty, so we got everything coated now. Now we're going to add, we're going to sprinkle it with flour. And that's about a fourth of a cup of flour there, guys. Now, if you want to use your hands, you can. I'm using a spoon this time. And just kind of cover all those things up with the flour. Now, you don't have to use flour for this, but we're going to do it this way because it just comes out better sometimes. If you hear me sniffing, it's because that Tony Satchery makes me sneeze every time I use it. It's got some strong peppers in it. All right. Now we're going to add it to our uh, pan. Um, we've got a pan heating up. 
Now, if you don't have a Dutch oven, you got to have your Dutch oven. I would recommend that you get you one. I bought this one for about 50 bucks years ago. And you're going to brown these things in batches. You want to brown them on all sides. So you can't do them all at the same time. We'll put the biggest ones in there first. Alrighty. All right, that's been about two minutes. We're gonna check them and see. Oh yeah, they're browning. So we're not gonna show you each one of them. There you go, and that's what they look like. Of course, you're gonna do that to all of them on all sides. All righty, that's what you want them to look like when you brown them, and now we're gonna remove those out and get out our our second batch and we should only have to do these in two batches here you want to keep all that flavor and oil down there at the bottom all right next thing we're going to do is going to start sauteing you know if you have liquid left in there you can pour some of that liquid off we're going to add our onions Add our celery, add our carrots, add our garlic, and we're going to add our fresh thyme. This is fresh thyme right here. You can use uh, store-bought thyme if you want to, but this makes it taste a little bit fresher. And we're going to saute that for about uh, five minutes, guys, until the onions are glistening. At this junction too, you can add you some more seasoning in there. And continue sauteing. Alright, now we're going to add our tomato paste. And you really can't add it um, by shaking it out, guys. We're just going to put that whole can in there. And I know people don't like to hear metal on metal. Just, just get over it. Stir that around. Let that get all mixed in there. You made it all ugly now. It was nice and pretty a little while ago. Now it's all yucky looking. But it's not going to be yucky tasting. Now once you put that in there, it's going to make it kind of sticky. So we're going to deglaze this with the red wine. Now this is, again, this is a uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And it'll help to loosen up some of those parts at the bottom. We're going to use the whole bottle, 750 milliliters, or a fifth. Okay, now we're going to add our two cups of beef broth, our can of diced tomatoes, get all that in there, and we're going to add our bay leaves. We want to put two bay leaves in there. And there's two bay leaves. One, two. Now you're not going to eat those. Although I don't think it would hurt you if you did, but we're not going to eat those. And we're going to bring that up to a boil. And actually, before you bring it up to the boil, you can you can put your, your beef back in there as well. So we're going to add our beef. And then we'll bring it up to a boil. And really you can I don't want to just pour this in there because it's just going to splash all over the place. I'm trying not to, to make it splash. So, All right, now once you get down toward the end, you can just pour it in there. Now all the juices that were left in there. Now we're going to bring this up to a boil. And then once it goes to a boil, 
we're going to let it simmer. And that's when you got to let it simmer for hours, like three hours, three and a half hours. Alrighty, we're going to bring that to a boil and it's boiling now. Then we're going to put a lid on it and we're going to turn it down to simmer. And then set your timer for three and a half hours and we'll come back in three and a half hours. All right, guys, you know, it's supposed to be about four hours for these things to cook, but it has taken these things seven hours to get tender. And you want these things to be fall off the bone. So, you know, see how that meat's coming off there? The meat's coming off right there. You want them to be fall off the bone tender because it's not going to not going to be really good. See how that's coming off? That's fall off the bone. That's what we want. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our we're going to add our mushrooms and I've rinsed these mushrooms off. I'm going to stir in these mushrooms here. And we're going to let these cook um without the lid. Kind of stir those in for about 30 minutes without the lid. And then what we'll do next is um, pull the meat off the bones. All right, that's been about 30 minutes, guys. So we're going to take the meat out. And we're going to take the meat off the bones. And see how that's falling off the bones right there? That is what you want. So we're going to do that. And then um, we'll come back and uh, show you what we're going to do here next. Now, also, what you want to do here, you want to taste it. And if you need to brighten up the flavor, you can add you some of your your um, red wine vinegar here. And we're going to add a little bit, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar just to brighten up the flavor here. And I tasted it, and it tastes good, but we're going to brighten that flavor up some. Taking most of the meat out. You, you're not going to get all those bones out, guys. You can get majority of them out, but you're not going to get all of them out. If you feel some more, like right there, see there's a bone there. But, you know, sometimes uh, when you catch a bone in there, you're, you're good. You're good. All right, we've got all the bones off, and it was messy, guys. I just I cleaned up the mess so you wouldn't even see the mess, but I got all the bones off. So all we've got in here now is just meat, and then we're gonna make our noodles. Um, you know, some of that right there, um, taking those bones off, uh, taking the meat off the bones. I had to eat some of it because you know some of it just wouldn't come off, and it was kind of good. So yeah, that goes with the territory. Alrighty, the oxtail stew is already prepared, and I can tell you guys it is delicious. Now I'm going to go through how to cook the noodles real quickly. So of course you um, bring the water to a boil. We're going to add in a whole bag of 12 ounce wide egg noodles. And we're just going to bring that back to a boil again. Once it starts to boil, you want to count for about seven minutes and 30 seconds, eight minutes, seven to eight minutes is how you want to, how long you want to boil these and you don't want to uh, put a lid on it. Alrighty. Once they've cooked to your level of tenderness, usually it's about eight minutes, guys. We're going to pour it into a colander and we're just going to let those set aside for right now. Now the next part of the buttered noodles is to take our our um, diced shallot and our garlic and we're going to saute that until they're glistening. That's about two tablespoons. That's actually about three tablespoons of butter. We just saute that.
Alrighty, once they've gotten to the desired consistency, which you want to want those um, shallots to be glistening, just like you would onions, you're going to add another two tablespoons of butter and melt that down. Now we're going to add our chives. We got two tablespoons of chives. These are fresh chives. You can use um, dry chives if you want to, but this will make it taste a little fresher. I'll mix those in. And we're going to also add two tablespoons of grated cheese. And that's Parmesan cheese. And about one tablespoon of lemon juice. One tablespoon of lemon juice. Let that butter keep on melting down. And then we're going to add our noodles. Then we'll be done. Alrighty, going to add our noodles here. Going to toss those around in there. There we go. Get everything out there. Oh, we lost two noodles. I found them. Make sure you use a large skillet, guys. Which I caught myself using a large skillet, but apparently it's not large enough. Also, don't forget to season. The Tony Saturates there. And a sprinkle of dill weed. A few sprinkles of dill weed. And there is goodness there, guys. Smells delicious. Really good food. Really good eating. And the way you serve it, just... You can eat this separately if you want to. Let's put you some noodles in there. And then add you some. Ooh, that thing's hot. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, that's hot. Woo! All right. And add you some of your stew. Like that. Oh, look at that big chunk I got up there, y'all. Oh, this is going to be so freaking good. Make sure you get you some of that juice. There you go. And there we have it. That is our finished product, guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Try it for yourself. It is time consuming. It's not one of those ones you want to um, start at 6 o'clock at night and think you're going to be done by midnight. No, it's going to take those, unless you've got one of those really good um, cookers that they have now, like an uh, one of those Instapots or something or a pressure cooker. Um, I did it the old-fashioned way and um, I had the time to do it. So it came out good. Peace.